Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I just got out, just got done praying and just being in the presence of the Lord, guys. And it's just been wonderful. It's just been just... I cry <laughs> every time I'm in His presence because, you know, it's true when the Word says in His presence, there's fullness of joy fullness of joy guys you know being in his presence sometimes you feel like you're just gonna burst it's just so much and the tears come you know as I said I'm not a big crier but when I am in God's presence you just there's just so much that melts inside and you feel his love and you hear his voice and you know guys maybe some of you are not feeling that right now but I want you to know if you just continue to just just show up just make time for the Lord. I guarantee you it will happen because it just didn't happen all the time for me like that either. Guys, as I was in the presence of the Lord, you know, a word came to me and I realized today that the Lord has just had me today in the air of talking about discernment and just being able to see between the lines, see, you know, not looking in gray areas, but seeing truth. And there's a lot of truth that God's people is being denied. There's a lot of deception and um, I had a dream and it was like in this dream, I can hear this person talking and what the Lord revealed to me is like I'm hearing a spirit, how the spirit operates. And I find in the, in the dream, the, the, the person was bragging about how they know how to sort of, um, they have this mannerism, the way that they operate is to set out these little I guess bait and they get the person to be hopeful who the person that they were discussing was what they do is the way they basically keep the person pursuing them and that's by doing little things that makes the person feel like there is hope or if they do xyz this will make them be closer to this individual and they're they're showing what they do is is dropping enough little uh what is it dropping enough breadcrumbs to let the person follow follow and feel like they're gonna get closer but in the end they become more elusive you see and so this makes the person want to chase them down even more and they do more things to drop more breadcrumbs and the person follows and follows and it feels like you're getting closer but what this what this spirit does is make itself even more elusive and there you find that there are more conditions and there are there's there's more that you have to do in order to get close to this particular thing and what the lord showed me is that this is the way a spirit the spirit, the spirit that has beguiled so many of his people. This is how the spirit operates. It's breadcrumbs in different relationships are being. There's something, someone, a type of relationship you desire, whether it's with your children, whether it may be with your spouse, maybe it's with people in ministry, maybe it's someone on your job, but God wants you to see that spirit. The spirit that is making you feel as if, yeah, there's a chance or I do want a relationship with you or I do want to make amends. But you find they're dropping breadcrumbs here. First breadcrumbs in the east, breadcrumbs in the west, breadcrumbs in the north, breadcrumbs in the south. And you're scattered trying to catch, trying to catch, trying to show that I want to be here. I do love you. I want this relationship. I want to make amends. And you're all over the place. And every time you feel like you're getting close that person becomes more distant or they disappear or they get closed off my brothers and sisters or then you realize there's some more there there's a uh, more stipulations and more hoops you gotta jump through and God is saying it's time to break loose from this deceiving spirit because it's a spirit of deception God says my spirit is up front I let you know what the what the standards are I let you know my expectations from you there's a difference with the spirit of God where you're going through a process of growth and sometimes things may get hard but what you will hear along the way is the voice of God 
God reassuring you and letting you know. And God is going to give you encouragement along the way. God is going to speak to you in the night hours. God's going to hold you and carry you. A lot of times you feel like you're by yourself, but you're not by yourself, my brothers and sisters. The Lord is carrying you through. But God wants you to know the difference between this elusive type of spirit that's coming through people. He wants you to focus on what he's told you to do. What you're doing is you're looking and you're paying attention. Your, your heart, your emotions, your senses are all over the place because this person, this individual, this group, the ministry, it's keeping you all over the place. It's the spirit of deception. God wants to answer some questions here. And this is what he's saying. The reason why they're not calling you, the reason why they're not picking up the phone to contact you, the reason why they have not emailed you, the reason why they have not sent you an apology is because they're unchanged. They haven't changed. They have the same position they had when you had that fallout with them. They have the same position they had. They're still holding that position they had when they disappointed you, when they lied on you, when they hurt on you, they hurt you, when they cheated on you, when they 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 switched the story on you. The reason why you're not getting a phone call, the reason why you are not, you're checking your email to see if maybe they sent you something. You're checking your spam to see maybe if you missed something. God is saying the the reason why you're not hearing anything, the reason why they're not reaching out to you is because their position is the same. It is unchanged. They're not trying to meet you in the middle. Their position is unchanged. They're the same way. So if you go after them and you're running after them and you're going into the enemy's camp to get somebody that wants to stay hostage, they like the amenities, they like the leeks and the onions and you're going after them, you're going to find yourself being, being held captive and they're going to be there with your captors making your time in captivity worse than it was ever supposed to be. A lot of times people that are lost and are in sin, what happens is they don't even realize when they're trying to hurt you, they're nothing more than bait to pull you in. They don't want to be free. Some people don't want to be free, my brothers and sisters. There's some that do and you pray for them. And this is where discernment comes in. But what God's children don't have is discernment. You don't have wisdom. You go run into a burning building with a person who started the fire. You're running with the arsonist trying to put out the fire and they're behind you setting the fires. You can't discern it because all you see is this person that you love, but you're not seeing that you're running into the burning building with the arsonist and the person start the fire and say, oh, it's on fire. And you go, you go put the fire out. In the meantime, they're setting a fire. They're setting a blaze at the trail that you went in. They're setting a blaze at your exits to keep you in. It is a deceiving spirit that operates in these individuals. And a lot of times the reason why this person is able to deceive and to do things. Don't be surprised when someone knows how to lie really good. It is a demonic spirit that has now taken over. And it's not that they never had control. It's because they have been, they choose to do certain things. So sin will come in. Don't be surprised when they can get the crowd to believe them. Because the blind crowd can be led away by the lie. You know, I heard somebody say, you know, they say a wolf in sheep clothing. Wolves don't attack wolves. <laughs> they attack sheep. Don't be surprised when nobody can see what you're seeing. And I, I, I get along with him just fine. I get along with them just fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Wolves don't attack wolves. And sometimes maybe that person's not even a wolf. It's just that they're not the threat. You are. Guys. All I hear God saying, it is time to step out of captivity. A lot of you, you're standing at the threshold of the door to freedom, but you're still looking back. This person knows how to play the game. When you don't call them, they start to call you. When you start to call them, they withdraw from you. When you're not texting them, when they want to text you and blowing up your phone, but the minute you, you text them, you start calling, you start whatever, they start to withdraw. 
Stop putting yourself through this cycle of abuse. You call it gaslighting. You call it all these different things. These terms are what the world call it, but it is a deep demonic spirit that goes and works through this person and they prefer to go through people that you care about, people that you respect, people that's been your mentors. Don't you know that in these last days, your mentors, the people that you've looked up to, the mask are going to come off. It's going to fall off, not because they wanted to fall off, but the because the Holy Spirit took it off. The angels of God have been assigned to open your eyes so you can see who's who. So you are having a hard time wrapping your mind around what the Holy Spirit is showing you. You know, I just had someone today that uh, that sent me an email. Uh, she had watched one of my videos today. And, you know, the thing is, she was talking about how people that you've known for so long and people that's been your mentors, people that you've looked up to, how God starts to reveal some things to you and how you, you know, it takes you getting hurt and harpooned and ran, ran over before you finally get it. Because all along the Holy Spirit's been showing you, the Holy Spirit's been telling you, he's been saying, no, 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 but you don't believe because this is my mentor. Or I've known this person for so long. Oh, this person would never do this. But you need to be able to look past the person and see the spirit and pay attention to the fruit. And what I said to this person is, you know, this is it's good that our eyes are being open and we have to get to a place that we learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit the first time. Not after you've been beat for the 15th, 16th time times four. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit the first time before now you have a lifetime disease you can't get rid of. You need to listen to him the first time when he warns you about this person before this person comes in and starts to molest your children. This person comes in and then you get a joint account and they take all the money out and run out before you let this person in and now they burst in their spores and you can't get them out your house because they're like ground in stains in your walls. You need to do this before you find this person that is, you need to have discernment before you go co-signing on stuff for somebody who gets the vehicle and starts to give you a hard time. You need to be able to hear the Holy Spirit the first time when he warns you so you don't put your hands to things in ministries because it says ministry on it and because they know these people and because they have these type of, they have a bookstore with well-known authors authors in it, you just following after them. Listen to the Lord the first time. Don't wait until you're married and going through hell with that man or that woman. Listen to the Lord the first time. Will you hear an audible voice from heaven that says, don't marry him. Don't marry her. Don't get into this. No, he begins to show you. He begins to unveil some things about the character of that man that you're trying to marry. Unveil some things about the character of that woman. You will see some things. Your family may see some things. You begin to, you begin to see the ugliness in this person that's calling themselves a man or woman of God. God will give you the opportunity to see. You know, it's called a significant emotional event. They talk about this. I've taught about this, guys, you know, in, in some classes and things that I've done in the past. A significant emotional event that changes the life of a child or a person. Or it could be an adult. Something happens that changes you. And God may give you a moment where you see this individual. And a lot of times a problem with God's children is when he shows you, because I've been guilty of it too, you want to pray it away. You want to fast it away. You want to fast love back. You want to fast this. Uh, you want things to be fixed. You want things to be put back how it was. You want to fast the hell off of this man or this woman. You want to pray and you want to work harder and you want to, you know, you want to fill the gap when God is saying, no, this person is not for you. It takes two to tango, my brothers and sisters. So if somebody wants to truly walk into the things of God, they will first obey him and in them obeying him, they will hear his voice and they will handle you according to what? The fruit of the spirit but when you don't see that guess what it's because this person they ain't hearing God they're not obeying him obey the Lord the first time 
Obey him when he shows you. Obey him when you happen across that text message. Obey him when he tells you, look in that phone and see what's in there because God will show it to you like that. Or sometimes God will have it where that stuff is left open and you see it. Obey him when you realize that she was seeing another man while she was seeing you. Listen to him. Don't let that woman talk you into, oh, this is not what it is and start to cry and all this stuff and want to make love to you one more time and your head get all muddled again. When you discover and you see, when you go somewhere and you see the, the, the pastor sitting in the bar or you see him coming out of a hotel with somebody, some of y'all get straight revelation. God shows you stuff like that and you, oh, you cry about it. They didn't know that you worked at the clinic and this person comes in to get an abortion okay you got to keep HIPAA you can't have HIPAA violations you can't tell but God's shown you this is what it is and what you're gonna do you want to pray for for change you can't pray to make somebody love you my brothers and sisters you can't pray something that's already already in, in that's already been ordained to be so Sometimes if that man is for you or that woman is for you, yes, it will be so if this ministry is for you, yes. But what I'm trying to tell you, God is not going to push you down some stairs and let you bust your lip and bust your head open and a few ribs are broken. God's not going to throw you out of the airplane with a parachute because that man or that woman's going to be at the bottom to catch you. That's not how he rolls. What it is, if that person is for you, he's going to keep you in a place of safety and he's going to say just like a father would or a, a, a parent would for their child, you prove and get yourself to together before you can come to get my seed to get my daughter out this house to get this child but a lot of times just like how we were with teenagers your parents warning you against somebody but you still want to run out there you love the bad boy you love that he had all the gold in his mouth you love the way he rock and he walk you love the sass that she had you like that she's lippy and she's mouthy you like all that and you're going to her how she knows how to just ring your bell and do all these different things guys and you get pulled out till you see she's ringing everybody's bell. You're not the only one for him. But getting out of just relational things, guys, the reason why they're not reaching out to you is because they're not changed. They haven't changed. Their position regarding you have not changed. And God is calling his people to turn around. You got to focus. You're focused on, you need to walk in Colossians 3, 1 and 2. To set your mind on things above. You're looking at things here. You're looking at this temporary life. You're looking at this temporary situation. You're sitting here trying to make Roscoe act right. When maybe the Lord has someone for you that you don't have to whip into shape. You don't have to be trying to figure out what he is doing. What's Roscoe doing now? Where did Roscoe go this time? Oh, Roscoe came back and he's doing something different again. He said he was at B, but now he coming with C. And he said he was at D, but he's what has letter P. You need to stop chasing down these people that's crooked and bent on following the path of darkness. You need to stop running behind this woman. And God, why? I'm married to this person. What do I do? Well, God, I tell you what, you're married to Christ first. And if this person is keeping you from God, then my brothers and sisters, that person is not for you. That person's not for you. You made the choice to marry that person. And now you in a hellish matrimony. And now you're calling out to God. And some of y'all have the audacity to blame the Lord. Lord, why, why? When God was telling you, no, no, no. Don't call out to God when everything turns. When when the person bursts and turns into something with horns. They come out looking like Maleficent. Now you're, oh, Lord, Lord. Where were, why were you not crying out to the Lord when he was telling you? Why were you not listening? But we have a God who loves us and he's faithful. 
So I'm here to tell you, listen to the voice of God. Listen to what he's showing you. And when he makes a way out, you go. You do the things that he's calling you to do. There's greater things to do. You have a lot of your the things that God has called you to do that's at the wayside. You're not in your ministries. You're not reaching out to the people. You're not growing because you're stuck. Because you're following after this deceiving spirit. That's elusive. It keeps you drop, dropping breadcrumbs and you're chasing and then you're chasing oh maybe this time pastor is really gonna let me in and this time pastor and first lady is really gonna accept me but it's nothing more than a spirit that operates through them to deceive you my brothers and sisters to deceive you to keep you off the focus, which is Jesus Christ, where you're no longer looking to the hills from whence come your help, when you're no longer lifting up your eyes onto the hills, when the Lord is no longer your shepherd, when you feel like you're wanting, you're wanting, but you're not looking at the shepherd who says, "It who said, the Lord is my shepherd. The word says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh you to lie down in green pastures. You should not be in any relationship, whether it's church relationships or personal relationship or sibling relationships where you can't rest. You got to be in a state of panic and, and, and trying to figure out what you can do to keep things from falling apart. You like the little boy who got his finger stuck in the bridge in that one hole and then another hole. They come and crack another hole and you put in your hand and then you put your chest and you're trying to do all these things to keep from falling apart. But I hear the Lord saying, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let everything just fall apart. Let the rivers flow. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Stop trying to make it happen. When God blesses you with a man or a woman that is for you, you don't have to make it happen. When this is the ministry and the place that you're supposed to be in, you're going to be able to work in one accord, my brothers and sisters. You don't have to make it happen. You don't have to make them accept you. They're not going to sit and try to muzzle you and tell you to be quiet because you got some knowledge and wisdom they're not gonna be sitting there sending their minions out to get you to keep you quiet trying to shame you you don't go to churches where they split up your family you don't go to churches where they split up your relationship and that's why it's important single folks i'm trying to tell you follow god's path if you are in fornication and you go into these churches that's already just the the foundation of fornication and adultery and everything that relationship it's not going to work it is not going to work i'm trying to tell you that and they're going to take one or both of y'all okay because you're not in the will of God. You're not in his covering. Stop fornicating. Stop doing these things. Stop selling yourself short. Ladies, stop giving up the pearls, okay? Men, stop doing these things where you are creating soul ties, where you are giving pieces of yourself to different women because that's what's going on. You're with this person. And as you release and you ejaculate, you give her a part of your strength and your spirit. And you're wondering why you're confused and you can't commit to one because you're all all over the place and if you 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 got you, you've permeated and you've had uh intercourse with this woman and you've given her your strength she goes up here and she's running all over the place and if this person she's got bipolar issues by the spirit that's tormenting her and she, this one got this problem and this one got this problem you can't focus on the person god has for you because pieces of you you're all over you're all over the place. You realize you only have a tenth of yourself left. And there's 90% of you all over the place. So you can't think right. You can't act right. You don't know why you can't do the right things. Why? Because you're in all these different women. And some of these women are sent. Some of these women are witches. Some of these witches are war. Some of these women are warlocks. Some are in situations with their impacts. With demonic spirit. With the marine spirit. With all these spirits that you don't think exist my brothers and sisters they don't exist but you see them in movies you think they only come from movies where do these producers get the idea to create these things because these things exist my brothers and sisters so man when you're all over the place doing this you can't act right you can't focus husbands you over here sleeping with this one talking to this one sometimes all you're doing is talking you're giving yourself a bit of yourself to this person and that person and now your wife don't look right to you no more why because you are in alliance with other spirits you're in in relationships with other spirit they call them soul ties yes you become one flesh through your mouth and through your word 
Oh, you think it's harmless. Oh, it's nothing. We're just talking. No, it's not just talk because it was talk that brought the world into being. It was the Lord saying, let there be light. And there was light. So when you have these conversations, don't think you're just talking. No, my brothers and sisters, you're putting things out there in the air. God, I thank you for this word right now. Ladies, get your mind right. Get yourself in your own house. Get yourself out of that man's phone, wives. Get yourself out of that man's face, wives. You doing all this stuff, you can't submit to your husband because you're submitted to this man over here. You submitted to her husband. You submitted to her boyfriend. You submitted to her significant other. That's the problem. The husband, you saying your husband's not doing this and doing that. He's not gonna do any more when you in the you in uh, uh Mr. Eddie's air. Okay, you in his face all the time. He can't be the man he needs to be to his wife because you trying to be the wife. You in his face, you in his phone, you in his bed, you in his head thread you in his chat rooms and that's the problem the spirit that allows you to be it allows that man to not be able to do the things that he needs to do it is this elusive deceptive spirit that operates in all these relationships so you can't focus on God you can't focus on the things that he wants you to do because you're being, you're busy trying to set up a kingdom in this world. You're busy setting up a kingdom on sand. You're busy following after man. You're busy following after stars and recognition. And I want to be in this choir and I want to be on this praise team because you never got to be in the, you never got to be famous. So you're trying to be famous in church. The problem is a lot of people, things that you didn't get to accomplish out there, you're trying to do it in the church. Oh, I wasn't a star. I'm going to be a star in the church. I didn't get to be at the boardroom. I didn't get to be the boss. So I'm going to be a boss in the church and I'm going to do this in the church. And so people are making the church carnal and the place where you get to be the person you never were you get to click your heels three times and now you're in charge and because you you see you didn't deal with those issues inside of you now you running around and 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 and, and you're, you're abusing other people and you're doing everything you need to do compromising yourself throwing yourself under the bus throwing people on the train tracks hanging people yourself doing hits on people yourself because you want to be accepted because the person that was rejected inside of you you never surrendered completely to the Lord so guess what happens my brothers and sisters you find yourself following breadcrumbs or you find yourself being the one dropping breadcrumbs the games are played the elusive games what you think is cute it's not cute the little things that you were taught of how to make a man like you. No, that man will chase you. The enemy will let you, you will let you, it will, let me tell you, the enemy will cause it to work and it to be a success with other people to set you up for that one that's going to destroy you. Oh, it's worked. Oh, your games have worked of how to get this man wrapped around your finger, how to play these games with this woman to get what you want. The enemy will let that work for many years for you. 100% success rate to set you up for the one that's going to destroy your life. The one that's going to put you in your grave. The one that's going to come and destroy your house. That's how he rolls. So God is calling for us to hear him, to have discernment, to have discernment and to focus ourselves on doing the things that he has called us to do. If you set your mind on things above, God will take care of everything around you. God will take care of the things that you don't see. God will take care of those plots that's being that's being planned against you. But never fear, he sends his angels to fight on your behalf. The Lord will pull his sword out for you. If you set your mind on him, set your mind on him. Don't worry about what's going on in your marriage or what's not going on. Don't worry about, Lord, I'm still single. Don't worry about, Lord, when am I going to be moved into my gifts when you stop trying to please man that's when God can move for you guys I hear God saying stop following the breadcrumb trails it's time to close the doors there's an elusive spirit a demonic spirit that operate in certain people in your life that they keep dropping crumbs and and you drop everything to to run when you see their phone calls you oh you got to take the call Follow the Lord.
take authority over this demonic spirit, this deceiving spirit. The spirit of manipulation. God wants me to answer the question for you. He is not calling you. She is not calling you. They're not calling you. They haven't reached out. They haven't emailed you because their position is the same. Their position is the same. No, they're not sorry. No, they don't care how you feel. They don't feel that they need to apologize. Because this is where they are. That's why he's not calling you. That's why she's not calling you. That's why there's not, they're not calling you. And God says to focus on him. If you focus on him and do the things that he's told you to do, my brothers and sisters, and stay the course and focus on him and stay on the path that he's directed you on and move away from who he tells you to move from and end relationships he has told you to end and close the doors and close the doors on people he has told you to close the doors on and focus on him. He will take care of everything that concerns you. And if it's going to be reconciliation, it will be his way. Stop leaving the door unlocked, I hear the Lord saying. Time to put the deadbolt on. Time to lock it. Stop leaving the light on. Time to turn it off and focus on him and let him handle everything else that concerns you. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for piercing the hearts of those who it's for. Cover them, Lord. Give them the strength that they need to move ahead, to move forward, to let go and to let you, to do the things that you have called them to do. Father, let them not stand before you and have excuses of why they couldn't. But Father, that they will be set free today in the name of Jesus. We cast down every demonic foe, every spirit that has caused a Delilah spirit, a Jezebel spirit that has the head of the men and women in the lap of someone that they trust and they can't think straight and they can't seem to move forward. But we break those chains today in the name of Jesus Christ. And we think that they're moving ahead and they will hear well done that they, as they put their hands to the plow right now to do the things you have called them to do we thank you that they're being set free right now in jesus name all right guys i'm out of here